Hey guys, has your Shield Canine, and um, today I'm going to show you guys how I teach the focused heel. A lot of people ask me how I teach my puppies and my dogs to walk next to me and stare at me. That's basically the focused heel. Um, so I'm going to show you my process for doing that. Now, real quick, the focused heel can be broken down into two pieces. So we've got piece number one, that is the finish. That's where the dog comes into the position. And then we've got piece number two, the motion where the dog moves with you. And I work those two things separately. I don't bring them together um, until both pieces are kind of where I need them to be and I'm satisfied with them. So let's talk a little bit about the finish first. This is Gage, he's about a five, six month old puppy out of my breeding program. So I'm gonna kind of show you guys a little bit about how I teach the finish, okay? So I've got his kibble here, he works for his kibble. And chip, I'm just gonna kind of get him going a little bit here, he's a little bit calm. So you can see what I'm doing there is all I'm doing, break, yeah, bye -bye. all I'm doing is I'm twisting the dog's head, chip, and when I twist his head, his body follows, okay? I'm not, by the way, for those of you wondering, I don't do one kibble, I do multiple kibbles at the same time, okay? Now, because he knows the left so well, since he's already really good at finishing on the left, I'm gonna show you guys by making him finish on the right, kind of how I go about the process. Because it's not as easy as obviously I'm making it look for him to get to the left, and that's because he already kind of knows what he's doing. So, watch this. So you can see already, you twist his head, chip, and the body follows, okay? So, start with the puppy in front of you. Start with the puppy in front of you like so, okay? Twist the puppy's head, and the body follows. Okay, just practice that in the beginning. Come here. Twist, right? Chip. And you could just practice almost like a spin. Well, it is essentially a spin, but all you're gonna do is you're gonna start having the puppy spin in to the right or to the left. So, chip. Now, a big mistake a lot of people make is they kind of start feeding off, like the puppy finishes like, let's say the puppy finished like back here they actually will feed the dog behind them. It's like, don't do that. If you want the dog to finish next to you, you have to reward the dog next to you. Same thing if he finishes like way in front, right? I'm not gonna feed him there, right? Because if I feed him there, guess what's gonna happen? He's going to start um, finishing in front of me and then I'm gonna be confused and frustrated because my dog isn't next to me. So if I want my dog to be next to me, I need to start rewarding him only in the position that I find desirable. Now, look, in the beginning, you've got to be incremental, okay? So right away, the first time I did this with him, I didn't expect, you know, chip, that. Right? I know how to turn his rear end. So I just worked on him turning his rear end, chip, right? And then when he was good with turning his rear end, then I started asking him, to come and do it right next to me, okay? And then when he wouldn't do it right, hey, pay attention. There we go. Chip. And then when he wouldn't do it right, I just wouldn't reward him. We'd set, we'd, we'd reset the dog and we'd do it again. So I've been talking too much and you'll notice that I'm starting to lose the focus of the dog. And I don't actually allow this in my training sessions. Like I don't allow the dog to smell the ground and leave and all this kind of stuff. I like to keep the dog on me. So I promote activity. Like I won't just do reps, reps, reps. I'll also work a little bit on his activity. Hey. Yeah. I'll get him barking at me. I'll get him following me. Yeah. And I really want the dog, yeah, to become active and powerful and pushy. I don't mind if he's a little barky. A little jumpy. Yeah. Good. And I teach him, keep your eyes on me, right? So you can see, a big mistake a lot of people make. A big mistake a lot of people make is they allow their puppy. They allow their puppy too much to just always check out. Whereas I keep that continuous power and focus. Okay. So normally I'm not chatting. I'm just working the dog and I have his full attention. But if I start to lose him, I'll be like, hey man, let's do some barking. You know? Okay, and then I have his full attention. He's already 
I already feel a little more power, like when he's taking the food, it's almost hurting my hand a little bit. This is good, this is the power that you want if you want a dog that's truly expressive and powerful in the work, okay? And then again, I can work on some reps. But when I have the opportunity to put the foundation in, I put the foundation in like this, where the dog's just bringing that power. I don't work all the time on behavior, right? So behavior's these, these types of things, right? The uh, chip, sit, down, heel, whatever. I work a lot on the emotion of the puppy, and then I do a little bit of behavior, and then a lot on the emotion, so that I have the, the, the active, chip, pushy, positive emotion. And you can go too far with it, where the dog's just all over you, and too pushy and too jumpy, but that's okay. I'd rather have it on that side. For me, it's very easy to bring it down. But if you're a little bit worried about it, don't go too far. For me, I can push him right to the point where he almost bites me, and then I channel all of that power into the obedience, and you're gonna see what this dog looks like in a couple of months.